Aloha and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about detecting multiple features with branches. So sometimes we need to use several if statements in a row without else or elifs. And the reason we do that is because several things can be true uh, without being exclusive. So we're going to uh, take a look at someone's age. I think there was a uh, shorter version of this in the book, but we're going to be looking at a little bit of an expanded one. So let me share the screen and pull up my favorite VS code. So we start with our example with age equals 20. And the first thing we're going to check is see if the age is under three. If it is, then movies are free. Then we're going to go to the next statement, which is if age is less than 18. Notice it's not an else if here or an elif. We're going to be checking both conditions. Actually, we're going to be checking every single condition that's here. And we're going to progressively catch different cases. So in the first one, we're going to catch all the ones that are under three. Movies are free. All the ones that are under 18. Hey, no tobacco products for you. And then uh, if you're uh, greater than 18, you can join the military. If you're greater than or equal to 21, hey, have a drink. If you're greater than or equal to 50, you can join AARP. And if you're greater or equal to 65, you can retire. Um, so if you go back in here, you can notice that, let's say you're one years old, you know, several of these may apply to you. You know, a couple of these may apply to you actually. So uh, if you're older than a certain age, several of these might apply to you as well. So we're gonna go through here and try a couple of different combinations. So we're gonna start with uh, age 20 and we're gonna play and run and hey, you can join the military. Isn't that wonderful? So now we'll go in here and change that age to one. Let's see what you can do as a one-year-old. Well, movies are free, but no tobacco, uh, no tobacco products for you. So that's kind of sad. Let's go and add, let's say 55 and then we'll, Go and play it, and we can see you can join the military now and have a drink, and you can join AARP. So if you want to see the max benefits, let's try 66. Hit play, and here we go. You can join the military, you can have a drink, you can join AARP, and you can retire. And that's all because up here we're testing each and every case. We're not doing an else and sending it into different uh, branches. We're just doing a straight out if this, if that, so we're going all the way down to uh, the last one, which is if age is uh, greater than or equal to 65. So that's how we're gonna do something like that, uh, uh, detecting multiple features with branches. So then if we come down here, I wanna uncomment another section of code that I've prepared. I'll go ahead and comment this out so that we don't have that in our way. So you can also nest if else statements. And that's really convenient when you're trying to check for different, uh, many different things. Mm -hmm. So let's say uh, this is just a totally made up uh, uh, thing here. So I've taken age equals 10, favorite color equals red and no gift at all. The gift equals nothing right here. I'm doing that because we want to initialize that. We're going to be setting it in our if statements and we need to set it to something initially because what happens if it doesn't meet any of these conditions and it gets out and it tries to print what gift is then you're gonna have a big fat error because it's not gonna have gift defined. So we like to define that up here at the beginning. So um, we've gone ahead and defined the age is 10, the favorite color is red and nothing for gift. So we're saying if the age is less than five, then the, and uh, then we're gonna go into this next block here. And then we test if the favorite color is red, then we do something else, you know, gift is something else. So if, if the age wasn't less than five, we hit down here to the, uh, the elif, and then once we enter the elif, we immediately have another if statement with another else. So notice how all of these are nicely indented. Uh, we're gonna get to this a little bit later, but uh, when you're doing different, these, these different areas over here uh, after a colon, these are known as code blocks. So code blocks have to have the same indention within the same code block. If you wanted to have, you know, uh, uh, let's say two or three indents here, and one indent there, you could do that. It's a very bad practice to do that. In general, uh, the rule for this is uh, you want to have four spaces or a tab as your indent. So uh, that's what I always use. I personally use a, a tab. It's just for me easy and uh, kind of lazy. And in VS Code, a tab actually equates to four spaces. As long as you're consistent, it's fine. And it's good to be consistent between these different code blocks because you can always tell at what level something is running. And that's just very convenient. So I've made a, a bunch of different uh, situations here. Like 
If the age is less than five, the favorite color is red, then hey, we give them a red lollipop. Else the gift is gonna be a blue lollipop. Uh, then you've got, uh, you know, for age under 15, uh, we're getting into more serious stuff. So if it's red, red bicycle, else we're giving a blue bicycle. Less than 21, we're going with a moped. You know, if the color favorite color is red, red moped, else it's blue moped. And let's go ahead and print it out down here and see what we've got. So we're gonna go ahead and print out our gift at the end. So we're gonna go up here and uh, did what do we set? We're setting it to 10. So theoretically we should be seeing a red lollipop. Or wait, no, uh, we should be seeing a red bicycle. So when we run it, sure enough, we get a red bicycle. Oops, so uh, let me go down here and clear this out. So let's change our age to, uh, let's say 20 and see what happens. So if we run it at 20, uh, we get a red moped because over here, uh, we're less than 21, but we're still greater than 15. So we like mopeds. And because our favorite color is red, we like the ro red moped. So let's go back up and let's change this to uh, blue. Even though it's not checking for blue, we can still uh, see what's gonna happen on the else side of that. So we're gonna set the age to, eh, let's say, uh, what was our last one? Our last range there. Actually, it's a catch-all after that. So the catch-all is, uh, you know, anything over 21, what is that gonna be? Let's say 33. So we're gonna save that and run it. And we get a blue Corvette because no longer do we have red as our favorite color. So it's gonna go through here. It's going to, uh, is age less than five? Nope, less than 15? Nope, less than 21? Nope. Then it's gonna go to this catch-all that we have where it goes in here and says, is the favorite color red? No, it's not. So it's gonna go hit else and else is blue Corvette. We're, def uh, we're gonna set uh, gift to equal blue Corvette. So then we do a print of gift and that gives us as we saw the uh, blue Corvette right down here. So that is our example for nested uh, if else. This could be nightmarish in other languages uh, particularly I'm thinking of JavaScript because I've used JavaScript quite a bit in the past. Let me comment out the code here and we'll take a look. Oh, actually, before we do that, I'm gonna take a look at another uh, example of uh, Python. If we want to see how uh, kind of crazy it can get in terms of you know, uh, levels of indent. So what we see here is uh, we're just gonna say time of day, location and weather. So if the time of day is equal noon, Yes, then we go to the next one and we see if location is equal to Hawaii. Uh, if it is and it is, yes, then we go down to the next if. Uh, we say is weather equals sunny. And if it all that is true, then we say, hey, you may want to stay out of the sun. So if it's not sunny at this point, we kick down to it is overcast. Maybe you can go out. Uh, so if at that point we go back to if it wasn't Hawaii, then we take a look and if it wasn't Hawaii, it says, why not bother, you know, why bother going outside if you're not in Hawaii? So then if that part hadn't uh, been true, the Hawaii part, if let's say the time of day hadn't been noon, then we're going to hit the else down here. So you can see that we're we're in our if else, we're just going down one more level. If if it wasn't noon, we'd immediately go down to here and run the too early or late to go out. If it wasn't Hawaii, we'd come down here to the matching else. But notice how everything is nicely in this line and everything is at that indent level. That's what we like. So if you're using VS Code or uh, there's a lot of other editors that will do this for you, but they'll show you uh, kind of uh, where you're at by spacing it properly for you. In Python, a lot of times if I'm doing this, like if I wanted to put in a elif or something here, you can uh, do the elif and you know put in your uh, condition, let's say, I don't know, um, we don't have anything defined, so I can't really put in another, well, I could say age. I mean, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but if I say age equals 10, you know, we could have like an if elif age equals 10 here, and then we can put in some things. But everything is gonna be, and it's it's nice because it all lines up in here, and your uh, your editor will often put you right at the space that you should be at. So right here, I'm at four spaces over. And we can go back and say one, two, three, four. But because we're on the third indent here, we're actually, actually, uh, yeah, three, four in. We're gonna be more than that. We're gonna be four, 
then another four, eight, and then another four. So we're 12 spaces in on this. So every level of the code block here, one, two, three blocks, every level of the, uh, the blocks we have is one more indent. So when we're doing four spaces, if we're three down, that's gonna be 12 spaces here. So if you're looking here at the time of day, you start off with zero, you're not doing any indents. Like up here, you can see we don't have any indents going on. But the first time you hit a code block, which is signified by a, a series of statements after a colon, then you're gonna be uh, indented over. So we're indented over four, then we've got another co uh, colon here. That means we're going up on a code block. So that co code block is uh, indented another four. So you can get as crazy as you want. You can go down as many levels as you want. You can be testing all kinds of conditions, but then you kind of, uh, you have to also unravel, you know, unravel yourself from that as you're doing the else's. So if you say, okay, it wasn't sunny, then we're gonna hit this elf. If, if it wasn't, uh, you know, Hawaii, then we come down here and hit this else. But luckily everything is in the same line. So it's very clean and it's very easy to understand. And the next example shows kind of why I like Python compared to uh, the way JavaScript does it. JavaScript um, is more like something like this. We take the same example. JavaScript, they use uh, uh, these uh, curly brackets to denote the start of a block. And the end of it, you know, can, uh, you know, is what uh, tells you where the block ends. But the problem is you can put it anywhere. Space-wise, it can go anywhere. And it often does. Sometimes when you're messing around and you're in, you're uh, cutting and pasting, you can, you know, end up with your parentheses somewhere crazy. And luckily there are tools that will help you match your parentheses, but it's extremely difficult sometimes if you're in a nested situation, knowing what matches with what. So it's like, okay, these match over here, but then, you know, over here, where does this match? Oh, this matches up there. It can get kind of confusing with JavaScript. So luckily, uh, Python is a lot simpler to use because in Python, there's this beautiful indentation that they use and it just really helps you understand where you are in the code. So if we take a look at that again, you can always tell by the spacing where you are. And if you go off of that, like we'll see in future lessons, you will get errors. So. Anyhow, that is it for this lesson. So we will be discussing more about uh, indentation in a further lesson. So stay tuned.